Hey guys, it's True with Because Jitsu here. I had a request to go over some butterfly techniques. So we're going to focus on the butterfly guard for this video. Both what is the butterfly guard, how does it work, different applications of it, as well as a few techniques involved in it. So like a lot of guards that have a specialty use to them, we need to be in a proper butterfly position before we start any of our techniques. And part of getting there is a technique itself. So we'll start with that. Uh, similar if you think of a uh, half guard. A half guard can be a half guard while you're smashed, while you've got both shoulders pinned to the mat. That doesn't make it a good half guard. So you need to get up on your side, get under your opponent, and then you've got some options. It's going to be similar with the butterfly. So I'll demonstrate with my partner here. The butterflies to begin with is putting both of your legs on the inside of their thighs with the insteps and lower shin of each leg. This could be a double butterfly or a butterfly guard here. You can have single butterfly hooks like that. And there's different ways, uh, similar to spider guard, to plug them into other guards. You can have a spider on one side, a butterfly on the other, uh, and a bunch of different things. Lasso will be the same thing. So once you have double, or I should say just plain old butterfly guard, once you've got both of these butterfly hooks in, the most common thing that your opponent will do will be to sit down on both knees and to smash your hips. So you're going to be grabbing over top here, either grabbing a belt, sometimes they'll lace their arms underneath the legs, start grabbing your feet, and then it becomes easy to pass. Here, my butterfly is smashed, because I need to use these butterflies as levers to lift him. And right now his weight is way back there. It's not close enough to my hips to literally lift him off the ground. He's actually like a rock. So what I need to make this an active butterfly, something that I can utilize, is to sit myself up on my butt and get myself basically chest to chest with my partner. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to reach over him with one arm as I come up on my elbow on the other, and I'm going to extend both my butterflies straight like this, seating myself and following him. You see how I scooted my butt to follow him in like that? Once I'm here, I've already got my overhook. I need to dig an underhook like this. So again, starting from a smash position, he's got my, my hips smashed, my butterflies can't do anything here. So I'm going to come over and up on my elbow, and now extend both legs straight, and scoop my body in to follow him. I get chest to chest here with this over-under grip. Hit that from a different angle. So again, I've got my butterfly smashed here, I'm going to bring my arm over, come up on my elbow, extend both legs, chase him in like this to get my over-under. Now you'll notice I've got a tight overhook here, and I'm right here to grab his belt with my underhook. That's going to be important for a bunch of different butterfly techniques, especially in the gi. Obviously you can't do a no gi, but underhooking is still good for no gi as well. So our first technique that we're going to go over, we'll start from that position with an over-under with your butterfly. Now like a lot of positions that involve um, one over, one under, both over, both under, the dominant position for butterfly, as far as my arms are concerned, are having double under like this. It's the same thing when you're uh, pummeling in the clinch, when you're standing. If it's MMA, you'll see them always say you've got to get to double unders because it's a dominant position. Um, here is technically a neutral position, but since I'm in butterfly, it's better for me than it is for him. He can't do as much with my over under as I can do with it. So what I'm going to do with it to begin with is I'm going to keep this nice and tight to my body because I'm going to sweep him in that direction and it stops him from being able to post this out when I bring him that way. And here's the most important part, is to activate my butterfly, I'm going to roll, but I'm not going to roll backwards. If I roll backwards, I get to that same smash position right here where my levers don't work. So that's a big mistake a lot of beginners make when they try these type of butterfly sweeps, is they roll directly backwards. What I want to do is roll diagonally towards the arm that I'm trapping this way, and then just one lever is placed in, bringing him over into full mount. Again, from a different position, I've got my over-under nice and trapped here. I'm going to take him diagonally in this direction as I lean over and extend one lever. It's going to be the opposite lever to the arm I'm trapping to end up in full mount. So, we were talking a little bit before about double-unders being the dominant position. So let's show you what we can do once we get there, starting right from the smash butterfly. So we're smashed right here, we're going to come up, extend, come in, and now I'm going to pummel in and make the extra effort to get double unders right here. There's a lot we can do from here, we'll go over a couple techniques. The first one is going to be a sweep. We just covered a sweep from over under, we'll cover a sweep from double under. And this time, 
I'm going to trap neither of his arms, and he's going to be able to post both, which seems like a bad idea. But the thing is, I'm going to lift his entire lower body off the ground and put him in basically a wheelbarrow position. And to do that, I need to get my hips right under his. So I like to grab that belt still with at least one hand. And when I lean back, I also pull my butt underneath him so that when I lift up, my hips are directly under his hips, making his legs very light to lift like this. Well, he's here. He can post this way, but he can't do anything with his legs. So what I'm going to do is extend one as far as I can extend and bring the other one around to trap the side of one extended here, which twists his lower body. So it doesn't matter how much base he has on his upper body. If his lower body twists enough, he has to come over. So again, I've got double unders right here. I need to scoop my hips underneath his. So as I lean back, I'm going to pull with this belt grip to get my hips under, bring them up. And now I'm going to use my legs, one fully extended on this side, and the other one comes around to trap this side here. Twist it, and come up into mount. One other option we can hit from that same setup, where I'm going to elevate his legs, is an arm bar, because he's going to have all of his weight basically resting on those, on those arms. He's being pushed forward like this, which makes him heavy as well as sticky. It means he can't take them off the mat without face planting. So for a moment, he's going to be carrying so much weight that he can't move those arms. I'm going to take advantage of that. So I've got my double unders. I scoop myself under and elevate. As he's planted here, I'm going to trap right here and bring both my legs to either side of his arm here. Bring them over for a straight arm bar. So let's hit it from a different angle here. We got our double unders. We're going to elevate. As he bases, we trap. And now I need to bring both my legs from here so that my knees clamp this arm right here. I'm going to lean towards. He's already tapping. <laughs> I like to turn it all the way down so I've got space between the floor and his elbow and try to hyperextend it into that space right there. One more time, full speed. Okay, for the last option we're going to go over, this one is going to play off of a reaction that your opponent should have once you've got double unders. And like any time somebody gets double unders, whether it's in the clinch or in butterfly, they're going to try to pummel in. A lot of gents will do this as a warm up, they'll pummel, pummel, and pummel with their partner. So we're going to take advantage of him doing the right thing. All right, so again, we've got our butterflies in, double unders like this, and our opponent tries to pummel in with this arm. I'm going to close my armpit as he does it so I don't have a hole that he can dig underneath. And as he's trying to dig, I'm going to bring this down to the wrist and take this one back here around to the back of the tricep. Now, I could just do a straight arm drag from here, which does work. That's a different technique. This one we're going to do pins his wrist right here that I'm holding to his belly button there. I'm going to pull this tight to my body right here. So now I'm going to do the same thing where I lean back and try to scoot underneath him. And this time I'm going to elevate so that one leg goes up, the other one comes down like this, kind of like a scissoring motion that should spin him over top of me, exposing this back right here. So from a different angle now, I've got both my butterflies in. Double on you like this. My opponent tries to pummel, I close my arm and find his wrist, bring the other arm around to grab that tricep. I immediately pin this wrist to his belly right here, pulling him tight to your body. If you want at this point, you can switch hands, this one to the wrist and the other one to the arm, that's fine too. If you don't want to take that risk, you can try it this way. Both ways work. Once you've got him pinned to your body and that wrist pinned to his body, I'm going to roll back, pulling him onto you and scissor my butterflies to flip it and take the back. So there's a basic definition of what your butterfly guard is, how it works, how it doesn't work, and good positions to get yourself into to start working it. So we've got a couple sweep options, an attack, and a back take. There's all sorts of other stuff you can do from here. I would suggest looking at uh, Marcelo Garcia. He's probably the godfather of butterfly guard. He's done it the most, he's perfected it the most, so definitely YouTube him if you haven't already. And I hope this helps. If you have any other questions or any other suggestions for techniques, let me know in the comments. Thanks for following. Make sure you subscribe if you don't. We'll see you on the next one.